This is News 8 Now, this morning. It can be extremely dangerous if you don't pay attention to your windage and everything else. Uh, the, the size of your, your pile is, a, is, a main, is the main thing that you should pay attention to. Just understanding what's on the ballot, um, your right to vote, your polling place. Mine has switched, but if I wasn't paying attention, I would have missed it. We always get feedback from our customers. We always get feedback from other stores. Uh, we have 45 locations, so we want to make sure that each store has the same unique look and that it's really flowing for all of our customers. It's a very interesting cooperative environment, and it's sort of everybody's rooting for everybody to do the best they can with the robot that they built. Good morning, everyone. That was your morning eye-opener. I'm Sophia Pullman. And I'm Derek Sibley. It is Monday, March 27th. Happy Monday. I hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. Did you do anything special this weekend? Uh, no, not so much. Saturday I was here. Uh, Sunday was a nice one. You know, we had a few clouds, yes. but overall, and you know, Saturday was beautiful too, weather-wise as well. They both were really yeah, nice. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was, it was outside good. for for a little bit of there both of them. There you go. I mean, you got to take it while you can, right? Especially <laughs> because you know we got some cloudier skies here today. Yes. And uh, that is something that we'll have to be dealing with um, later on today, and also really throughout this week, we are expecting some increasing cloudy cloudy skies. There goes the the microphone. Uh, we're looking at mostly clear here conditions uh, this morning uh, with only a few clouds off towards the west of us here right now. But overall, we can say that conditions are looking mainly quiet here to work with this morning. Here's a quick look at the satellite and radar picture, and you can see just a few clouds uh, moving across the area. Current temperature readings are into the 20s. We're seeing 23 right now in Eau Claire, 27 in La Crosse. Uh, we're seeing temperatures in the teens. Black River Falls, you're at 16, one of the colder spots this morning. Sparta's at 17, Prairie Sheen's at 24. Baroque coming in this morning at 28 degrees. So for your planner today, here's what we can expect. We got clear skies through 7 o'clock. Partly cloudy skies arrive by 9 and then by 11 o'clock. That's when we will turn cloudy which will continue through at least 5 o'clock in the day with high temperatures expected to reach the mid 40s uh, this afternoon. Now stay tuned. I'll have a check on that full weather forecast coming up in just a bit and we'll go over what we can expect here as we head throughout the rest of this week. Sophia. Thanks, Derek. Let's get to some news this morning. We're less than two weeks from an election that could determine the fate of Wisconsin's abortion laws. In La Crosse, pro-choice organization Women Win Wisconsin hosted what they called a rally for our rights. News 8 Now's Anna Fisher was there and tells us more. My body, my, my, body, body, my, choice, my choice, signs of all kinds carrying the same message. Nearly 100 people of all different ages coming together in support of reproductive rights. We can't pretend like these issues don't affect us just because we can't vote. From representatives. These are choices and options and decisions we should all have the right to make throughout our lives. To future doctors. Our voices are incredibly imperative, especially in situations like this. Two high schoolers. The rally highlighted the upcoming election. Organizers urged people to get to the polls. Just understanding what's on the ballot, um, your right to vote, your polling place. Mine has switched, but if I wasn't paying attention, I would have missed it. Wisconsin Supreme Court candidates Janet Protasevich and Dan Kelly are fighting to replace Justice Rogensack. She retires this July. The person who was voted into the Supreme Court is going to be one of the deciding votes on whether or not abortion is legal in the state of Wisconsin. Protasevich is the liberal candidate. Her win would give the court a new liberal majority. It's also important for me to help remind people of the history um, of the before me and the women that will come after me. The 2023 spring general election is coming up in just over a week on Tuesday, April 4th. You can find more information about the candidates on our website. That's news8000.com. 
Seven acres of property are damaged after a brush fire in Ferryville. Responders say they were called to North Buck Creek around four Saturday for a controlled burn that got out of hand. Ferryville Fire Chief Alex Novak says a homeowner was burning a brush pile, but the wind picked up and it went out of control. The fire then crawled up the hill before it was extinguished. No buildings were touched and no people were injured. It can be extremely dangerous if you don't pay attention to your windage and everything else. Uh, the, the size of your, your pile is, is, a main, is a main thing that you should pay attention to. Chief Novak suggests that anyone looking to do a controlled burn to notify dispatch and avoid doing burns in high wind conditions. He recommends people keep a proper water supply on hand. Bikers put the pedal to the metal for a good cause this weekend. On Saturday, the Dahl YMCA and Lacrosse used cycling to support Live Strong and Youth Strong. Teams signed up to bike in person or virtually to raise money for cancer. Research organizers say this event helps encourage people to pay it forward. So many people have been touched by cancer, and I believe once people know what the fundraiser is for, I don't think there's a family in, in the community that has, been not, has not been touched. Teams raised a total of at least $20,000. If you missed the event, you can still help with the fundraiser by donating online at the Lacrosse YMCA's website. A lacrosse dragon boat team is getting ready for a trip of a lifetime. Cancer survivor team, the Lacrosse Mississippi Sisters, will head to New Zealand this Friday. They'll be a part of the International Breast Cancer Paddlers Commission Volunteer Dragon Boat Festival. Team Captain Terry Paday says lots of hard work has led up to their big trip. I've actually been in Florida for the past few months, so I've been working out with a team there, paddling. Um, a lot of the local folks here have been going, coming to the Y and working out on their own just to keep strong and maintain um, good core strength. The festival they're headed to welcomes nearly 5,000 people from all over the world. It was a celebration of all things Irish at the American Legion this weekend. The Cooley Hooley Kaylee celebrated lacrosse's connection with its Irish sister, City Bantry. There are Irish tales, Irish food, and a silent auction. People also took part in Irish dancing. Organizers said the crowd was great this year. It's music, dance, and storytelling, which is all what a Hooley Kaylee is about. Money raised at the event went towards two horse therapy organizations, Horse Sense in Lacrosse and Harry Henry Care Farm across the ocean in Bantry, Ireland. Winter Guard members showed their stripes at the first ever Winter Color Guard competition this weekend. The event was held at Onalaska High School and students came from as far as the Twin Cities. Teams of performers shared their choreographed dances with the audience, wielding flags, rifles, and batons. Lacrosse Stars director Jason Harden says Winter Guard is a little different from Color Guard. Color Guards want to keep on being active. Um, they actually perform in venues like this, a gymnasium type size space, to recorded music, rather than having a marching band or some other kind of ensemble provide the music. Harden hopes this event gets people excited about Winter Guard programs in the area, and he hopes to host the event again next year. Robotics teams from all over the Midwest came out to compete for the Minnesota North Star Regional Competition. Teams competed in the Lacrosse Center, driving robots to score points. Winners at regionals will get to compete at the Worldwide Championship in Houston. One of the event's organizers says robotics is all about teamwork. It's a very interesting cooperative environment and it's sort of everybody's rooting for everybody to do the best they can with the robot that they built. The Seven Rivers Regional is coming up next week. If you'd like to check out the competition, you can find more information online. We have it on news8000.com. Here in La Crosse, Blaine's Farm and Fleet is officially reopened after a big renovation. Customers got to enjoy special promotions for the big day and got to check out the store's fresh new look. The store's event coordinator says customer feedback played a big role in the remodel.
We always get feedback from our customers. We always get feedback from other stores. Uh, we have 45 locations, so we want to make sure that each store has the same unique look and that it's really flowing for all of our customers. Even Green Bay Packer legend Dylan Hughes joined in the celebrations. The reopening also celebrated the store's 40th anniversary. It's a true sign of spring. A lacrosse staple is opening up for the season today. Rudy's Drive-In in, in Lacrosse will be ready for customers this morning at 11. This year is extra special as it has now been open for 90 years. Owner Justin Smith says it's an exciting time of year. It's that time of the year. It's time to get back at it. It's, it's fun to see all the customers again. It's fun to see all the, the workers. Um, it's, it's sunshine and it's going to get nice. Rudy's will be open seven days a week for outdoor and drive up dining. But the dining room is still closed because of, <coughs> excuse me. They are hiring, so if you'd like to help out, you can apply online. Still ahead on your morning news, the president of Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis says the banking system is sound. We'll explain. And why Minnesota legislature is considering a heat pump discount for homeowners. That and more coming up this morning. For now, we're sending you to break with something to put the good in your morning. Just like here, uh, just like here on Earth, other planets have seasonal changes. NASA's Hubble Space Telescope captured the shifting conditions of Uranus and ice giant rolls on its side around the sun and follows an 84-year orbit. So for 42 years, part of the planet is without complete sunlight. Even, look, even looking at the planet just seven years apart, you can see the orientation shift. Hubble also captured the different weather patterns on Jupiter. Don't go anywhere. Your consumer news at News 8 Now this morning after the break. Only just a few clouds here this morning, but overall mostly clear weather conditions here across the Cooley region. Dog walking conditions this morning are looking mainly sunny. However, you may run into some clouds though as we head in the afternoon and also some cloudy weather conditions by the time we reach this evening as well. Your zone forecast for today in La Crosse County calling for high temperatures this afternoon to reach the upper 40s, 48 in Shelby, Mindoro, Holman, many locations seeing the same temperature. Further south, upper 40s to low 50s. We're looking at new Alvin today with a high of 50 for you. Mid 40s across our central zones today with 47 Black River Falls, 48 in Sparta. Highs today in uh, in Eau Claire reaching 42 to t reaching 42 today. In fact, most of the Chippewa Valley this afternoon into the low 40s. Bus stop forecast this morning off to school we go. We're looking at 28 degrees with clear skies as we head home here this afternoon. We are going to be increasing the clouds here again. Temperatures pick up to about 46 degrees under mainly clear under mainly cloudy. That is weather conditions. Now coming up in just a few minutes, we're going to take another look at your full weather forecast. I'll let you know how the rest of the week could be shaping out here after today in just a bit. In your consumer news this morning, who would have thought a limited edition Girl Scout cookie would be so popular? The much hyped rally, a raspberry flavored spin on the thin mint, was always supposed to be a limited edition cookie. But as demand for the cookie surged, supply remained at the same level since factories struggled to produce the limited edition cookie. Leaders say the new online only ordering system led to increased demand. Starting April 1st, Twitter says it will remove all the verified checkmark statuses. People and businesses who want to keep their checkmarks will have to subscribe to a Twitter Blue or Twitter Verified Organizations plan. Corporations must pay $1,000 a month plus taxes for a verified mark on its page. You can have a verified page for $8 a month or by paying $84 yearly. More stores in the U.S. are now allowing customers to tip workers. However, a recent study shows Americans are tipping less. Experts say inflation is one of the main reasons Americans, one of the main reasons. They also said that customers have to deal with more places offering tipping options, which leads to many to be less generous. Despite tipping methods changing, experts still advise to tip when you can. In an interview with CBS News, Face the Nation, the president of Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, Neil Kashkari, said the bank system is sound. 
while adding that it's too soon to know that effect the Silicon Valley bank failure will have on inflation and the economy. Kashkari also called for a regulatory system that protects the soundness of our banking system and helps community and regional banks to thrive. Experts say it's a more energy efficient option and can make a dent in carbon emissions. And last year, heat pumps passed the sales of gas furnaces. That's according to an analysis by nonprofit Rewiring America. Caroline Cummings explains on a possible heat pump rebate in Minnesota. It definitely is a very cost effective cooling solution and extremely comfortable. Emily McPherson has a heat pump in her home, an all-in-one heater and AC unit that experts say can cut energy costs and your carbon footprint. Instead of generating heat or cold air, it moves air in and out of your home to get the temperature you want, pumping out heat in the summer and drawing in heat from the outside air in the winter. So heat pumps were a really good solution to add really cost-effective cooling in the summers. And then we also use it to offset some of the heating in the milder months. But she still has a gas furnace she uses during the worst of winter. Demand may be high, but heat pumps haven't been as viable in cold climates like Minnesota's. Now experts say advanced technology is making it easier. Some pumps able to function in weather as cold as negative 13 degrees. They work really well down to those temperatures. That didn't used to be the case. Um, so that is really helping us to transform this. If you get one, the U.S. Department of Energy says some heat pumps can cut energy use in half, which can save you money. But upfront costs can be high, so state lawmakers are considering rebates up to $4,000 to make it more affordable. In order to qualify, your home will need to be audited for efficiency to maximize impact. There's also federal tax rebates and incentives, too. Win, win, win. I'm very excited about this. Thank you for bringing it forward. The Center for Energy and Environment estimates that a heat pump in a single family home could save you $1,000 per year. The Citizens Utility Board of Minnesota suggests to not only rely on a heat pump, especially during our extremely cold days. That's it for your morning consumer news. Let's check in with Derek and today's forecast. All right, thanks so much for that, Sophia. Starting off mainly clear here this morning. Current temperatures now in La Crosse are currently at 27 degrees. It's a bit warmer here downtown with a temperature of 30, though. Visibility looking good for that driving uh, commute there at around 10 miles. Meanwhile, to the north of Eau Claire, a little cooler here, 23 degrees for your temperature. Wind speeds, though, are looking nice and calm. Current air temperatures across the rest of the area. Well, we got the teens further off towards the east. The 20s pretty much for everyone else here this morning. And the low 20s across the uh, Chippewa Valley here uh, this morning with forecast highs today expected to be into the mid to upper 40s. We are expecting both 48 uh, to happen in both uh, La Crosse and in Sparta here today. Uh, pretty sheen Basquebel into the upper 40s to low 50s uh, come this afternoon. So for your planner, we are going to be looking at mainly cloudy conditions at around noon today. Those cloudy skies will continue as we head into the later afternoon hours. Then we start to see some clearing as we head into 8 o'clock this evening. At the same time, our temperatures will drop as this cold front is forecast to move in. That will help cool us down a little bit for tomorrow as well. Only a few clouds across the area right now, but again on Sky Tracker, you'll see as we time things out that the clouds will begin to increase from the west. So by around 7 o'clock, we'll start to notice that here for our western communities. By 10 o'clock, pretty much everybody is going to be looking at mainly cloudy weather conditions, and we can really say the same thing as we head into this afternoon around 1 o'clock and also into 4 o'clock today here too. Now by 7 p.m., we expect some partial clearing to take shape across portions of our central zones, while our northern and eastern communities will probably be a little bit on the cloudy side. 9 o'clock, here comes some more clouds uh, expected to move in, and mostly cloudy skies can be set as we head into around overnight tonight around 1 o'clock in the morning. By 5 a.m. tomorrow, we'll start to see some clearing here once again as those clouds will get out of here and maybe just a few lingering clouds by around nine o'clock before yet again more cloudy skies move in from the north as this next system could bring us also a chance of seeing some light rain showers, maybe even a little bit of snow here to portions of the Chippewa Valley uh, late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening early. So a check on your eight day forecast showing that we will be looking at some mostly cloudy skies overall tomorrow with a high of 45 degrees. Now we do have another front moving in. That's going to give us some colder temperatures on Wednesday. Highs drop to 39, mostly sunny skies there. We're going to be watching our next storm system, though. That's going to give us a chance of rain on Thursday and also into Friday with highs in the 40s and low 50s. Uh, looking at slight chances of snow for Saturday 
uh, lows in the 20s and 30s. Stay with us. We're back with much more news and weather still to come on News 8 Now this morning. We're taking a quick break with a look what happened on the day in history for March 27th. We'll be right back. Download the News 8000 app today. Welcome to the Morning Blitz. We're just three days away from the start of the MLB season. There's a lot to be excited about, whether it's the new pitch clock or a nice ballpark hot dog. The Brewers were doing some last second tune ups during their spring training game yesterday afternoon. They were taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. 11 up, 11 down for Brandon Woodruff. And this makes 12 after Luis Reyes plays the hot corner to perfection. A good outing by Woodruff going into the season. All right, fifth inning now. Brewers down three. But Joey Weimer is going to line one out to the fence and right center. That's going to bring in William Contreras. And the Brewers cut the lead to two. And very next batter, and Christian Yelich, is going to give the Brewer fans something to cheer for. A laser shot out to left field. That clears the fence and we're all tied up. Ninth inning now, Brewers with a chance to win it. Base is loaded, but Tyler Black is going to pop this up to shallow right field, and that's the ball game, a four to four tie in spring training. Twins also in action yesterday afternoon. Tie game, but Willie Castro is going to change that. One swing of the bat, that's a long shot to deep left center field. A two run home run gives the Twins the lead as they would go on to win it seven to two. Just two more spring training games before the season starts. So be ready. And the final four is set and we've got some fun matchups waiting for us. First, we'll have the nine seed Florida Atlantic University taking on the five seed San Diego State. The first time either of these schools have made it to the final four and now one of them will be playing for a national championship. And then on the other side, we've got four seed UConn, maybe the hottest team in the tournament, blowing out almost every team they face. They'll be taking on the Miami Hurricanes. The U is back after an upset win over Texas yesterday. Now they'll be going to Houston for the semifinals, both of these games next Saturday night on CBS. And don't forget the Wisconsin Badgers in their own Final Four, the NIT Final Four in Las Vegas. Wisconsin will take on North Texas in the semifinal matchup. The Badgers have really played their best basketball of the season in this tournament run and had a big win over Oregon last week to get here. Chuck Heffern's been on fire. Steven Crow has played well. So we'll see if the Badgers can continue their run on Tuesday night. That'll do it for the Blitz. We'll see you tonight. The Italian Coast Guard coordinated the rescue of over 3,000 people from 58 boats in distress in the last 48 hours, according to a statement published Sunday afternoon. Most of the rescues were on boats heading from Tanisa to an Italian island where at least 20 people died after their boat capsized on Saturday. French government officials will no longer be allowed to use entertainment apps on their work phones. The French government made the announcement on Friday. The ban prohibits game and dating apps, streaming services and content apps such as TikTok and Instagram. According to France's Ministry for Civil Services, entertainment apps don't have the necessary level of cybersecurity and data protections. Here in the U.S., people in the city of brotherly love can wash down their cheesesteaks with a glass of water. Despite a chemical spill over the weekend, Philadelphia officials say the water in the area is not contaminated. The Coast Guard said in a statement Sunday night that it's collected 60,000 gallons of contaminated water and say the risk of possible contamination gets smaller as time passes. In Iowa, the Department of Natural Resources is warning people about what could be in their drinking water. They're looking into PFAS or so-called forever chemicals. The chemicals are used in manufacturing anything from your kitchen pots and pans to your makeup, and they can cause major health concerns like cancer. PFAS have been around in nearly half of the treated drinking water samples taken from Iowa public water supplies so far, according to the Iowa DNR. In Iowa, a crowd gathered at the State House on Saturday to protest two bills they say would relax child labor laws in Iowa. Marcus McIntosh has the story. Our kids are not for sale. 
Our kids are not for sale. Strong words from Al Womble, political director for the Iowa AFL-CIO. His focus Saturday morning are bills working their way through both the House and Senate. Bills, he says, weaken child labor laws and endanger our children. Well, these children are going to be working in things like you know, meat packing plants uh, and mining and having 16-year-olds work at bars and restaurants serving alcohol. A coalition of community and labor leaders came together with one goal in mind. We're hoping to raise awareness about that and we hope that other people say that, you know what, this is inappropriate and it's not what's best for Iowa children. State Representative Dave Dio manages the bill in the House. He says not so fast. I'm a little perplexed at some of the arguments. He says those in opposition likely rush to judgment without fully reading the bill, saying the current bill updates child labor laws in Iowa that are outdated. Some concerning street occupations with kids shining shoes and selling newspapers on street corners. A lot of the sections of this part of the code were written uh, beginning in 1906, I believe, and, and some of it was written in the 30s. Representative Dio says the House file does not allow teens to make drinks, but they will be able to serve them. We're, we're working on an amendment right now to make it uh, clear that it, that it would be only for in a restaurant. They can bring the drinks from the bar to the tables. As for working in meatpacking plants, he says it allows teens to work in an office, not the production floor. There are restrictions in the current law, and those restrictions are still the same in dangerous occupations. The bottom line is Representative Dio is hopeful with a Republican majority in the House, this bill will be on the governor's desk for her signature this session. The bill originally would have excused businesses from civil liability if a student was sickened, injured, or killed due to either the student or company's negligence, but an amendment removed that language. Lawmakers in Iowa have also legalized a new transgender bathroom law. It requires anyone at schools, including students, staff, parents, and visitors to only use restrooms that identify with their biological sex assigned at birth. The law was taken into effect immediately and left many schools scrambling to find a solution. Iowa Democrats say the new policy has them worried about the impact on transgender and non-binary students. Imagine being a kid who is um, identified as a girl throughout elementary school or middle school who woke up this morning and found out that now all of a sudden they're less safe at school than they were when they went to school yesterday. Although state Democrats don't agree with the new policy, they encourage schools to provide unisex and single stall restrooms for transgender and non-binary students. Here in Wisconsin, in a wave of confusion, one Wisconsin family helped a young woman in need. Police say they, the woman had been walking on the Oregon Rotary bike trail in Oregon just off Highway D when she was tackled and sexually assaulted by a stranger. A day later, many of the area's residents are expressing their anger. Nobody should have to have somebody walking with them or whatever. They should be able to walk alone, run alone, or do what they want to do. Police say after the woman was able to get away from her attacker, the man fled to a nearby parking lot where they believe he left in a car. The newest staff member at Northside Intermediate School isn't your typical employee, but she has become a bit of a celebrity in the hallways among 5th and 6th graders. Nicole Herzog introduces us. Meet Northside Intermediate School's newest staff member. Well, Miss Hazel has been a little bit of a celebrity here at Northside. <laughs> People have been Hazel, 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 and so everybody wants to learn about her and pet her. But Hazel isn't just your typical school employee. She's a therapy dog trained to bring comfort to students. Just in the short time already, we've seen her interact with kids in a real positive way, help kids feel at ease in the main office if they're getting care by the nurse or if they're visiting with one of the principals or the counselor. Before becoming a therapy dog, she was trained as a guide dog by Occupaz, an organization that trains and donates service dogs to people in need. Four days ago, she was officially donated to Northside and adopted by the school secretary. For the school's students, having Hazel around means more than just making a new four-legged friend. Sometimes school can be really stressful and I think Hazel just kind of helps everybody calm down when you need it. And at the end of a long day, getting to spend time with Hazel is a bright spot. In she's just always there. She's in the office. When you go there, she's always going to be there and just be happy. <laughs> It may be unconventional to some, but all paws are on deck at Northside. 
not all schools have a therapy dog, and I think that they all should because it's really helpful. The school's principal says the transition of bringing Hazel to school was pretty seamless, and they hope to keep her there for years to come. Uh, sir, it's a mostly clear start uh, this morning here to the day so far. Only a few clouds here and there in our local satellite and radar picture showing that uh, for today, though, we can expect the clouds to increase. In fact, I am expecting a mostly cloudy day overall before it's all said and done. Temperatures, though, pretty seasonable with a high of 48 light north northwest winds at 5 to 10 miles an hour. For tonight, we drop down to 23, so a little bit unseasonable there. Much colder, mostly cloudy skies and northwest winds at around 5 to 10 miles an hour. I check now on your zone forecast uh, today. Highs into the upper 40s for you in La Crosse County. We're looking at 49 if you're at Holman, 50 in New Albin today, 50 as well in Soldiers Grove, down south in the Gaze Mills, 51 in Steuben here today for you, 48 in Melrose. Same temperature in Trempolo today, Whitehall at 46, highs into the low 40s, mainly for the Chippewa Valley here today. Now for the uh, drive cast overall, things are looking mostly sunny here for your morning commutes. Now for the lunch hour, that's when we can expect some increasing clouds, expecting a cloudy uh, lunch hour there. Also cloudy skies as we head into your evening commute hour as well. All right, coming up in just a few minutes, we'll take a last look at that full weather forecast. I'll let you know how the rest of the week is shaping out. And also coming up in our buzz report, find out who's the world's most popular music artist. We'll be right back. Clear start here so far this morning with temperatures into the 20s and low 30s. In fact, here in La Crosse, we're currently at 27 degrees. A little bit uh, warmer, slightly downtown at 30 degrees. Visibility good at 10 miles there. North winds, though, at around 8 miles an hour. Current conditions to the north in Eau Claire also looking clear here as far as our sky coverage goes. 23 being the temperature, dew point of 14, visibility at around 10 miles. Check out the temperatures further east, though. Much colder. Sparta currently at 16. Same in Black River Falls. Volkfield at 19 degrees. Brokeway, you're at 26. Basketball at 23. Prairie du Chien way down to the south at 27 and same can be said here to the west in Winona so far this morning, but our forecast highs today are expected to rise into the upper 40s. I'm expecting 48 today in Sparta, just shy of 50 in Volkfield, high of 42 in La Crosse today, 48 this afternoon should be set in La Crosse, uh, 50 for the afternoon high in Prairie du Chien. So overall your planner looks like this with cloudy skies moving in by around noon today. We expect the cloud cover to continue by around 4. We'll start to see a little bit of clearing take shape though as we head into early this evening at around 8 p.m. I'm thinking so we have this trough low pressure with an associated cold front that behind the front is going to give us some cooler temperatures to work with for tonight and also into the day tomorrow out ahead of it. We could be looking at some increasing clouds though and as of right now skies are looking mostly clear, but as we take you into sky tracker, you'll start to see some of those clouds move in from the west and completely cover up the skies here as we head into late this morning. I'm thinking around 10 o'clock or so by one o'clock. Very cloudy weather conditions can be set across the Cooley region. We can say really the same thing too as we head to around four o'clock later in the day by 7 p.m. A lot of the clouds may begin to decrease across portions of our central zones, while our northern and eastern locations will still remain pretty cloudy. Nine o'clock rolls in, and we are looking at cloudy skies moving in once again from the west. And really the same could be said again here, too, as we head to one o'clock. By 5 a.m. tomorrow, the clouds will decrease again, and maybe a few clouds left over around 9 a.m. before another weak system moves in. That could give us some cloudy skies once again to work with by tomorrow afternoon around 6 p.m. Maybe a slight chance of a rain or snow shower mainly focused to the north though. A check on your eight day forecast shows us that we will be looking at again those cooler highs tomorrow with a high of 45 thanks to that front moving in. Mostly cloudy skies again. Mostly sunny though for Wednesday, but high temperatures will be much colder up to 39 degrees there. Thursday and Friday may look pretty wet as we're watching another storm system move in. That could give us some good rain chances to work with as we close out the work week there with highs in the 40s and 50s and maybe a slight chance of a snow shower lasting into early Saturday. We'll keep our eyes on that. Low temperatures mainly into the 20s and 30s and highs mainly into the 40s and low 50s. In our morning buzz report, The weekend has officially become the most popular artist in the world. According to Guinness World Records, The weekend is the most popular musician in the world and no one comes close. The stat is based off his popularity rating on Spotify data. The singer currently has the most monthly listeners on Spotify, standing with 111.4 million as of last week. The artist that comes close to The weekend is Miley Cyrus. 
Actor Jonathan made mayor Major, excuse me, is facing domestic assault charges. New York police arrested Majors after an alleged domestic dispute. Some of the charges include strangulation, assault, and harassment. Police said that a 30-year-old woman informed officers she was assaulted. A representative for Majors denied any wrongdoing by the actor who has recently starred in Creed 3 in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Many may not know this or his real name or his stage persona, but Walter Cole was a trailblazer and drag performer for more than 50 years. The Guinness World Records recognized him in 2016 as the world's oldest drag performer. During his long career, he faced many obstacles because when he started out, many laws banned performances like his. He supported LGBTQ plus causes and helped raise money to help people with AIDS. Cole died at a hospital in Portland last Thursday at the age of 93. So in the more the 5 a.m. show, I said how Taylor Swift would have been my top ranking yeah. for Spotify. Who would your top artist be? I have to go with Drake. I do like some really. Drake. Yeah, uh, that's good. surprising. I wouldn't have guessed that. <laughs> Before we head to break, it's time to look at today's look who's eight. All right, we want to wish uh, Kenton a happy eighth month. Uh, he loves to play with his toys and watch his pets run around the house. Happy eight months to Bryson. Bryson enjoys crawling around and eating mashed potatoes. Happy eighth birthday to. Sawyer. Sawyer loves to shoot hoops and ride his dirt bike. Happy 8th birthday to Keaton. Keaton loves to help his dad on the farm and go hunting with his grandpa. Happy 8th birthday to Miles. Miles uh, enjoys building Legos and hanging out with his brothers and sisters. Happy 80th birthday to Karen. Karen loves to garden and have a slice of pie with her friends. Happy 80th birthday to Rochelle. Rochelle is still super energetic and is always smiling. If you know a special someone turning 8 months, 8 years, 18, 80, or 88 years old, soon we'd love to feature them yeah just upload their photos to our website news8000.com and look for the submit pictures button under the home tab on our website stay with us we have everything you need to know today in five minutes or less your morning news now is up next time for your morning news now it was a celebration of all things irish at the american legion this weekend to the cooley hooley kaylee celebrated lacrosse's connection with its irish sister city pantry there were Irish tales, Irish food, and a silent auction. People also took part in Irish dancing. Money raised at the event went towards two horse therapy organizations, Horse Sense in Lacrosse and Harry Henry Care Farm across the ocean in Bantry, Ireland. Bikers put the pedal to the metal for a good cause this weekend. On Saturday, the Dahl YMCA in Lacrosse used cycling to support Live Strong and Youth Strong. Teams signed up to bike in person or virtually to raise money for cancer research. Organizers say this event helps encourage people to pay it forward. If you miss the event, you can still help with the fundraiser by donating online at the La Crosse YMCA's website. We have a link at news8000.com. A lacrosse dragon boat team is finally ready for a trip of a lifetime. Cancer survivor team, the lacrosse Mississippi sisters, will head to New Zealand this Friday. They'll be part of the International Breast Cancer Paddlers Commission Volunteer Dragon Boat Festival. Team captain Terry Paday says lots of hard work has led up to their big trip. I've actually been in Florida for the past few months. So I've been working out with a the team there, paddling. Um, a lot of the local folks here have been going, coming to the Y and working out on their own just to keep strong and maintain um, good core strength. The festival they're headed to welcomes nearly 5,000 people from all across the world. Robotics teams from all over the Midwest came out to compete for the Minnesota North Star Regional Competition. Teams competed in the Lacrosse Center, driving robots to score points. Winners at regionals will get to compete at the Worldwide Championship in Houston. One of the event's organizers says robotics is all about collaboration. It's a very interesting cooperative environment, and it's sort of everybody's rooting for everybody to do the best they can with the robot that they build. The Seven Rivers Regional is coming up next week. If you'd like to check out the competition, you can find more information online. We'll post it on our website, news8000.com. Here in La Crosse, Blaine's Farm and Fleet is officially reopened after a big renovation. Customers got to enjoy special promotions for the big day and got to check out the store's fresh new look. The store events coordinator says customer feedback played a big role in the remodel. 
The reopening also celebrated the store's 40th anniversary. A true sign of spring. A lacrosse staple is opening up for the season today. Rudy's Drive-In in lacrosse will be ready for customers this morning at 11. This year is extra special as it has now been open for 90 years. Owner Justin Smith says it's an exciting time of year. It's that time of the year. It's time to get back at it. It's, it's fun to see all the customers again. It's fun to see all the, the workers. Um, it's it's sunshine and it's gonna get nice. Rudy's will be open seven days a week for outdoor and drive up dining, but the dining room is still closed because of low staff. They are hiring, so if you'd like to help out, you can apply online. As you head out the door this morning, we're looking at mostly clear conditions, temperatures in the upper 20s. However, we're going to start to get pretty cloudy here, especially by around 11 o'clock, and the cloud, cloudy skies will continue through at least 5 o'clock this afternoon, with temperatures uh, mainly into those mid to upper 40s, especially between 3 and 5 o'clock here today. For tomorrow, another mainly cloudy day, high of about 45 degrees, much colder for Wednesday, 39, mostly sunny for your Wednesday, though, so at least we'll have that in our favor before some rain begins to move in Thursday and Friday, maybe a slight chance of snow for early Saturday, but overall those high temperatures should mainly be in those 40s and low 50s and lows in the 20s and low 30s. Hey, we're going to have more sun than we want this week, so right. that sounds good to me. Yeah, so we just have to kind of look forward to Wednesday. I know it's going to be a little colder. We don't want to be in the 30s for our highs this time of year, but at least we'll have some sunshine to work with. And unfortunately, Thursday and Friday is probably going to end pretty wet. Yeah, Thursday and Friday, not my favorite, yeah. but... It is Saturday where it is. and Sunday, it'll be okay. Yeah, it should be fine for the weekend. Thanks, Derek. Yeah. And thank you for watching News 8 Now. Don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on news8000.com. We will have the latest updates to today's top stories on News 8 Now at noon. Have a great day, and thank you for watching News 8.